Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and today uh, we're starting a new little project here and that's on uh, this quick shot joystick we've got um, basically one of my viewers has contacted me, they saw this uh, this joystick on one of my previous uh, videos when I was talking about alternative controllers you can use on your master system and um, he was asking whether I'd be interested in selling it um, as a refurbished joystick to him because this is the joystick he had um, when he was um, a kid with his, um, I don't know if he had a Mega Drive or a Master System, but uh, when he had his console back when he was um, younger. Um, so I said, yeah, I'd um, have a look at refurbishing it and um, getting it in nice working condition for him. And then he mentioned that he doesn't actually have a vintage um, console or computer anymore. And he um, does all his um, vintage game playing on emulation. And how would it be possible whether I could convert this into a USB controller? I am always up one for a challenge, so I thought, yeah, go on then. Uh, so what we're basically we're going to do with this is we're going to give it a full refurb and get it into a nice working joystick. Because I mean, at the moment, it basically it works. But I, I've just got it connected up. I've just been playing it with um, Sonic here. And um, it does basically work. I mean, left goes left, right goes right. You look up down works, the fire buttons work, but they're, they're all a little bit sticky and not as not as responsive as you'd expect. The slow motion button sticks, you can put it into slow mode, but when you flick it back into um, fast mode a lot of times it doesn't, you have to kind of like flick it round a few times to get it to actually come back into um, its normal mode. So that's sticking. Um, it's uh, this basically this controller. It has two um, inputs. You have player one and player two inputs, and that switch again is a little on the um, iffy side. It doesn't always switch back to player one, so that'll need looking. The turbo fire, I think, works all right. Yeah, the turbo fire, I think, is um, going to be okay. Don't know what it really does on Sonic anyway, but. Um, We'll give all that a clean. So basically, the, this first video, we're going to get inside this thing and give it a really good going over internally. Clean all the contacts up on it. Um, make sure there's nothing broken in there. And get it into a good functioning joystick. And then in the next videos, we're going to be looking at converting this to a um, USB joystick. So what we'll probably be doing stuck to my table. It's amazingly, most of these, the rubber suckers have disintegrated many years ago. Um, unbelievably on this one, actually the suckers are in really, really good condition. It's actually sat up. It's actually pulling my table up, my mat up. But uh, what we will look at eventually is um, removing these two cables and fitting a little USB socket at the back here. So um, he can just plug a USB cable in it when he wants to use it with his um, PC. So anyway, without further ado, we'll, uh, we'll get the um, old Mega Drive off now. We can sit that to one side and we can have a look at the... Uh, we can have a look at the stick in a little more detail. So let's pan you up a little bit there. Right, that's a, it's not in terrible, terrible condition. It's not like it's been... seems to have tons of abuse. It's got the ambiguous bits of green this time, it's usually white, but this looks like it's green paint spots on it from when someone's been decorating. But they'll all come off. There's no scrapes or scratches or cracks in the plastic. The plastic will come... look, done it again. Actually, the, the suckers are really good on this. That's unusual. Uh, there's no real physical damage to the plastic, it's just a little bit dirty, so this should clean up really, really well. So I think the first thing we're going to do, get inside this and we'll have a good look at um, what we've got to play with. Let's grab an appropriate screwdriver. I do have one of these sticks myself and I must admit I, uh, I use it quite a lot actually. Because I don't use it as it's intended to be used. It's like it's intended that you plug it into the front of your console in player one and player two's um, controller ports, and then just have the one control and flick the switch between you uh, for player one and player two. What I do, uh, which is great for you, know, um, the games where you uh, it's turn-based. There's not much good if you're battling each other. You can't really um, keep fighting for the stick. 
But uh, what I use it for is I have it between my C64 and my Amiga with one um, of the controllers in each computer. So I only need one joystick for the two um, computers and it's quite a nice joystick to use. It works out quite well. Right, let's get in here and let's have a look. Let's see how this thing's put together. And we're in. Oh wow, I was not expecting that. There's quite a lot more to this than, um, than meets the eye. A gold star device down there. We've got quite a big beefy um, switch there. Quite a lot of transistors, resistors, capacitor. Obviously the cable inputs there. Hmm. Let's get this board out and we can have a look on the back of it. Oh, I think we have to undo that as well. That seems quite worn. Oh no, it's not. It's just it's just really nasty grease on the back of that. So we can clean all that up and we'll re-grease it when we've finished. Have I missed a screw somewhere? The one hiding under a component or something. I don't want to risk breaking anything when I pop this out, you see. Oh, it's there. I am an idiot. Right, there we go. And we're out. Let's just... Uh, Pop that out. Oh, this is going to be really, really easy to clean up. Now they must go. Aha! They go in there like that. That's what keeps them centered, I think. Yeah. Doesn't look bad particularly badly made actually and this will clean up really nice so that can go in the bath and get a good scrubbing but what we want to do is have a look at this Ew. it's absolutely caked in, in flux residue and they didn't clean the board very well when they made this thing I can certainly say that what we want to have a look at is underneath here because this is where the contacts are see how we get these out without damaging them there we go you basically just have to very gently ease these up and out like that. Okay. Put them three out. And actually, they're in absolutely super, super condition. They really are nice and look at that. Look how nice and shiny and clean they are. We're going to give all this a clean because that flux residue is horrible and it's everywhere. But those are beautiful all we need to do is clean the carbon bits down there really now oh, that one's lost one of its little um, leggy things I think I broke it off it must have been missing um, from before 
it seems to stay in position anyway so hopefully we can do something with that that's from up there now these do look a little bit more um, yellowed on the contact so this is the last one there we go that's all them out there is a little bit of discoloration on these ones them ones like I say look absolutely spotless but they have a little bit of um, discoloration on them let's just pop that and switch off all the plastics will go in the um, wash and get nicely scrubbed clean but I think we'll have a go with this um, board first If I can get the lid off the isoprop. Get some isoprop on there. And we really want to just. Well, in fact, I should really use some PCB and flux cleaner on this. Have I got any lying around? Where's my kind of PCB and flux cleaner? So this will just help get rid of the worst of that grease before we um, go in there with the isoprop. Give it a good... See if we can get rid of some of this horrible flux that's on there. That brings it off nicely. got a little scrubbing brush somewhere. Where's my little scrubbing brush gone? There it is. That's getting it off. And that, I think, is from manufacturer. It don't look like anyone's been in here. Uh, could be a bit of water damage there from the past. So we don't know where these things have been stored. But I can't see any uh, rework on it. So I think all that goop and horrible flux was literally from when it was uh, manufactured. There we go. got the majority of that off then I think we'll just go over all these pads with some isoprop and make sure they're all absolutely spotless you can see that coming off on there very dirty but you can see on the end of there there certainly was some dirt on them so we'll put that to one side and we'll just turn our attention to the little um, buttons let me see if I can get you a bit closer switch into the macro I think there we go so these are the little, uh, these are the little contact buttons and all we want to do is just very gently clean that uh, little bit of carbon inside. So that we really don't want to take any off it. There's a couple of ways you can clean this. This is the less um, abrasive approach. The other approach I occasionally use is to, uh, and then we'll just, uh, we'll just dab that dry with a... There we go. The other way I occasionally uh, clean these is to uh, just rub them ever so gently on a piece of paper and that does the same thing it just uh, gets any muck off the uh, carbon without
damaging the carbon too much you're just taking like the tiniest tiniest fraction off and you can see there the isoprop basically just slightly dissolves the um, top layer of the uh, the carbon but it takes off any uh, any little contaminants that are on there which are going to be causing a bad contact because you want that carbon nice and clean on there really just drying them off because I don't want to leave the um, isoprop on there too long where it might actually start risk eating into the um, bonding and actually ruin the uh, carbon on there because if we lose that carbon if it was to be all worn away the button wouldn't work so I said we're literally just putting the tight just cleaning the, the surface of it and just perhaps taking a tiny little bit off as you can see that's pretty dirty that right and there we go so that's all them cleaned up we can now put these back in the PCB and all we need to do we line the holes up just push them in place can you see what I'm doing here I'll just uh, zoom you up slightly so there we've just got it lined up in the holes there and if we go on the other side just get hold of it and give it ever such a gentle little pull and it just pulls it back into its holes just like that and there it is it's back do this one next so we just put it in the hole put it in the hole just gently get hold of it with your finger does help if you've got some nails I wouldn't use pliers for this I think pliers might be a little bit too um, severe and you risk damaging the little bit of rubber. Just You can get hold of it with your fingers like that and just pull it through. I think that's all you really need to do. Like that. So just push it in. One more on the uh, directions. Then just get it lined up and give it a quick pull like that. There we go. That's the. Uh, the three direction buttons back together they feel just as good as they did new the, the, the actual rubber there is still in really nice condition there's no rips or splits or anything on it so I'm quite happy with that I did think about possible a micro switch conversion for something like this but to be honest if you did that you're not going to have the same feel as you had um, originally it's going to not feel like the same stick what I want to aim for is exactly the same feel and everything as you was back in the day when you was using your stick. But just with the advantage that you can uh, plug it into your modern PC. And uh, play using emulators. So I mean, that's what I'm um, aiming for here. So there's all sorts of things we could do just with the case of the stick. But that's a bit beyond what I'm actually planning on this. Come on. 
always one's going to be awkward, isn't it? What we could possibly do if we've got something that isn't sharp, like that. I wonder if I can just use that to help me. Yeah. There we go. That's it. Ooh. Bloody warranty up here today. It really is. I'm up in my attic and um, it's been a nice hot day for once. And uh, even though my attic's insulated, it's still uh, rather warm up here. Right, there we go. I'll put this one as the start button. Okay, and all we've got to do is do that last uh, button three, which is the one that's got that missing off it. Now that was missing uh, before we started this, so I don't think it's going to cause an issue, to be honest. I think it should still hold in position okay. We'll see anyway. If it does pose to be a problem, we'll have to find another scrap controller that uses this type of contact we can uh, pinch one out of, but... Actually, I think when that's reassembled, that's not going to cause a problem at all. It's holding well enough in um, holding well enough in position. So there we go. That is all our uh, our buttons redone. Perhaps we'll look for a new one for that. But it does hold in for now. Right. So we'll put that to one side for now. And the next thing we're going to do is uh, switch it back on. Let's bring you. Back. So we've got the case here, so we've got all the plastic buttons, got the stick itself there, which is a little screw actually on the side, so we can take that screw out and split this up. I'll take that screw out from there and I'm hoping that will separate these, which it does. really don't want to wash the spring, it'll only make it rust. But we'll get all this nice and clean. Clean all the crud off from the ball at the bottom there. Clean all this plastics up. And we can pop these out actually. I think if we just push them little tabs in, yeah. And I think them buttons should pop out. Just like that. Get them out. Or do they pop out? I don't want to risk damaging them. Yep. Yeah. And again, does that pop out? Maybe not. I don't want to risk forcing it and breaking something. Yeah, it does look like it pulls out if I give it a wiggle. There we go. How, else, how far else can we take this apart? Now that's a decal, so I don't want to um, really damage that. So, can we take that out? We can. Just pop, pop, put these plastic tabs out with our fingers and hopefully this uh, plastic there we go that's out so that's it pretty much uh, all dismantled I will be back after I've um, soaked this in the bath for a um, while and got all the paint off and got it nice and clean so um, for you it won't be uh, it will be only be a sec but for me it'll probably be about half an hour or so so see you in a second okay and it's back from its bath and I think you'll see it's come, actually come out really nicely uh, it's got a few fingerprints on it from my greasy hands, but it really has come out uh, very, very good. I've just noticed it. Just, 
a little bit dirty in there. I think we can just get the Q-tip in and give that a quick, quick final in there. There we go. No, it really has come um, quite clean. This I managed to get all the paint spots off, and there really is no marks or anything. There's no scratches on it at all. It's in really, really nice condition. All this has come up. I have a little bit of paint there. Let's see if I can just get that off. You know, when I inspected it down in the uh, bathroom, I couldn't see any little bits. Now I've got it up in the light of the workshop. I keep spotting uh, There we go. There we go, that's gone. Put that back in there. The buttons have come. Let's we'll give them a last little polish. way to go in them. Perhaps it's the other way. Yes, it's that way. There we go. That's one in. Wrong way. Of course, because the bot, the um, plastic slope so they have to have a slope button so that button there is that button there that's in that's them buttons back in all this has come nice and clean let's give that a final wipe on there that's nice and clean now out which button goes in where. I think that's that, that one? Nope. I think that's the player one, player two button. That goes in like that. Just how does this fit on the back of it? Because that's not the button for in there. Nope, I put the wrong button in the wrong hole there. And now I've got to figure out how to get it back out again without damaging anything. Ah, oh, there we go. It should have been this one. That's the one that goes in there, like that. And then that fits on the back of it, like that. There we go. That's better. That button just snaps in like that. That button, again, that's not come up very clean. I just need a little, uh, little going over as well. A bit more isoprop. I don't know why the. Uh, well, that's not come as clean as I was hoping it to. Give it a quick, quick white round. There we go, that's better now. That's come clean now. There we go. It's probably because of all the little grooves on there. It's just a bit... Uh, 
bit sticky. So we'll leave that off for now and we'll leave that one off for now. And we'll concentrate on putting the uh, stick back together. And put the spring back on. The spring's in nice condition. That's still nice and uh, bouncy. It's got plenty of uh, springiness in it. I need to put that back on there like that. There really is nothing to the um, button and the what have you on here. That shaft just goes back on. And put the screw back in. Like that. Now this is the fun bit, is getting all this stuff lined up, so when we put the PCB back on, it all goes in the right places. So there we go, that's everything back together inside. Now what we need to do is just put the control board back in. Make sure the switches are set to the right place. all down to getting this last switch to sit right. I've got all the rest in. It's there, yeah, it's popped out. Let's try again. Oh no, it's actually it's gone on, it's um it's gone in position. There we are. A quick twist like that. That's it. I think that's everything back where it should be. We'll get a couple of screws in just to hold it for now and then we can handle it and we can make sure all the switches work before we uh, reassemble it. Okay, that's one screw in. Put that screw in there. I should hold the PCB in position and we can just check that all the slide switches work. Turbo's working. That just needs pushing. That's not quite sitting right. No, I think we'll just pop that out and we'll um, have a go at reseat. That's player one, player two. That's the. Uh... In fact, we need to pull this out again anyway because I just realised I've just cocked up. There's something I haven't done which I was intending to do while I had this board out, which is always the bloody way. A good job we've only put two fixings in it up to now. Let's take these back out again. Get the board back out. We'll just see why this switch isn't sitting quite the way it should be. Let's just take it back off again. Take that out. We'll try turning it round. Because it could be that these switches have got a very slight slant to them. We may have put it in the wrong way. That's better. That feels better already. So yeah, there's a very slight... Can't really show you until I put it back together. But it seems to be a very slight slant to the... Uh, this back in now.
no that's wrong that's definitely wrong because the thing doesn't line up now so put that on the wrong way around let's turn that around There we go, that's in now. Let's turn that and put that back where it should go. I'm go I've still not done what I was planning to do. Put that down for a minute. Dear me. What I'm just going to do, because it was an issue before. In the conversion, I think I'm probably going to reuse these switches for some functions, so uh, we want them to work. While we're in here, let's just give these switches a quick lube up. Don't need too much. Just like that. That's what I was planning to do before and forgot. Right, now let's try putting it back together again. Third time's the charm. Line that up. There we go. Now we've just got to make sure we get these other connectors to... That one's in. That one's in. That's in. Right, that feels better. That feels very positive. Let's get one of these um, screws in so the board doesn't move. We can flip it over and have a look and make sure we're happy. That's that first screw in there. And then we'll put this screw in at the top there. That'll hold it in position. better that's all the switches back where they should be now right now what we want to do is we'll finish off um, putting the screws in that hold the hold the board in position that's one down there the other ones you see you've got lots of holes on here but not all the holes have got a pillar behind them to actually hold anything there's one there a pillar there because it's not got enough of a head to actually um, hold anything we've got one screw remaining and there must be somewhere for this one screw to go we we'll just have a have a shifty round I really can't that's most odd hmm can't actually see anywhere for that uh, last screw to go, so it must have to go in there. Hmm. Where else could it have come from? Must be that one. that one is there a hole there I 
No, that's not a hole. How perplexing. Ah. We've got it. It was there. That's it. That's the one. I knew it went somewhere. We may just stick a little bit of um, switch cleaner down there while we're in here for completeness. And it comes quickly. Give that a quick move around. There we go. So hopefully now this should be uh, as good as it was when it left the factory. So I think what we'll do is we'll just give it a quick test. We'll put the uh, put the base back on it. Okay, there we go. So, I mean, if you were using this on a um, vintage console, Master System, Mega Drive, Amiga, what have you, that's it, that's as far as you'd want to go. Let's give it a, another quick polish down. I think that has come up looking really. I'll just give it a quick quick brush over with a bit of, bit of cloth. There we go. So, as you can see, that has come up really really nicely in fact what we'll do we'll just connect it up to the uh, old mega drive and we'll just give it a quick test play So we've got a uh, Sonic up on the screen again. Just press uh, start. Oh, we've got slow mo on. seems to be working. Oops. So anyway, let's see. Up, down, left, right. That's really sensitive now. You hardly need any touch on the um, stick at all to get him to... It's difficult for me to, really for me to show you quite how um, sensitive it is, but uh, all the buttons now, first touch of the button, they're all really nice and responsive. So they weren't too bad um, before. They were. They had a little bit of stick to them, but now they're absolutely. Like I said they're absolutely perfect. So I'm really, uh, I'm really pleased with them. Like I said all the buttons now are absolutely perfect, and the how much you have to touch that controller to get it to work. It's really, really sensitive. I'm quite, um, I think I'm going to have to have give a, my uh, controller a clean up now because it's nowhere near as good as this. 
and it didn't take much. It only took a little bit of cleaning of you know, them rubber contacts to actually um, get this working really 100%. And it's a really nice controller actually. So the next part of this video is we're going to be looking at um, how we're going to convert this to a um, USB controller controlled um, joystick. And what I've got, I've got now you can pick these up literally for a few pounds from China. And it's your ambiguous copy um, Super Nintendo kind of uh, joystick. So you've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six buttons, um, select, start, and your direction pads. So we've got lots and lots of um, buttons on there. So much so we can have all the controls that this does. So we've got our left, right, up, down. We've obviously we've got only got three A, B, C on here. So we've got the ABC, but what we can possibly do is like the turbo fire option, the switch for that. Uh, perhaps even the player one, player two switch, I don't know. Uh, certainly the slow motion um, switch there. We can perhaps use some of the contacts in this, and with the software you could perhaps assign them to different things in different emulators. Like for an auto fire, you've got a few. You could perhaps um, have them so they're different auto fires. I don't know. That's just something I'm having to think about. But yeah, uh, in the next video we'll be cracking this open, have a look at this, see what we can do to um, basically take the board out of this and um, shrink it down into something, connect some wires to it instead of just having the controllers on the front. So basically we'll end up with a little PCB with a load of wires coming off it, which we can then um, start hacking the PCB in here get rid of the standard joystick controller cables like I said either fit a socket or just fit a USB um, cable I mean, a nice long cable like that maybe or a socket on the back and we'll have the PCB out of here fitted in there and obviously wired up to these controllers but that'll be in the next video anyway so um, hope you enjoyed that so uh, thanks for watching and goodbye